How do you sort out cervical nerve root compression? So this is a great question because how do you know if it's coming from the neck and not from a distal area? All right, well, for most PTs, they're gonna look at your range of motion. They're gonna see if you have any loss of range of motion. Maybe they're gonna ask you a little bit about your history, and that's probably where they're gonna stop. If they're an orthopedic PT, they might give you those four special tests, those four cluster signs that are supposed to rule in or out radiculopathy, and that would be looking at your rotation, doing some compression, doing some distraction, and then doing an upper limb tension test specifically with a median nerve bias. All that to say that that is Still not what I would think to do at this point in my career to rule in or out cervical issues. Why? Because I've done this. I've done this for years in my career and it still didn't really give me information. Looking at their range of motion, asking them these questions, doing these special tests or these cluster signs, it really doesn't work. What does work are two things. Number one, getting a proper history. And I know that sounds boring, but listening for signs that mean nerve issue and what that would be i talk about this all the time is there numbness and tingling is it both sides is there pain at rest does it come and go what does it do to treatment at the local area or how did it respond to rest because most of the time nerves st are still there despite rest most of the time nerves can be a bilateral issue all the time it's numbness and tingling is from a nerve issue and then finally the second thing that i would do is I like to push on the areas, not just palpate, but do some form of mobilization as a diagnostic test. And Maitland is a great use of this. So I'm certified in Maitland. They have some great classes that take you through how to give specific, targeted, and graded pressure to local areas of the joints, specifically the spine. And I like to use this diagnostically because so often, a patient is telling me that they don't have any of these symptoms, they're moving well, but then when you go to put pressure on the spine, one area is significantly tender and it almost always correlates with the area that they're having the problem, such as like the thumb, C5, C6, right? The pinky finger, C7, T1. It's almost always that correlated. So what I like to do is listen for the symptoms, listen for those five signs, but then also put pressure through those areas, not just rely on range of motion.